What's going on guys? Austin here and in this video we are going to be taking a look at the extra points best bets of the week. So we're going to start where we always do with a previous week's recap. These are the games from week nine. I had a fantastic week in week nine. Uh, some of it was lucky. Some of it was, uh, you know, just kind of the ball turning my way. Uh, and then some of it was just, you know, getting the picks right. I've had a lot of absolutely wrong picks, like the Chargers and the Falcons. For some reason, I've, I've seemed to have like three or four of those every week, and it's been killing me. But then Bills and the Jets, just pure right on that. Raiders and the Jags, that one felt like uh, like a ball kind of bouncing my way because both times, the way that the game started out, the Raiders and the Jags uh, had put up a, a quite a bit of points. Uh, but then that hard ceiling at 47 got hit. Uh, and then... The Seahawks at the Cardinals, they were not scoring, not scoring, not scoring. Then Geno Smith threw a pick six, and all of a sudden he just started driving the football, touchdown, touchdown, you know, field goal, touchdown, and all of a sudden I hit that over. So we like those picks. Then over here on the spreads, I feel great about all these, and I was so upset with that Vikings pick because they were winning the game by two scores when a ref literally bulldozed into – a Vikings DB and a Washington receiver caught the ball at the one yard line. It was unbelievable. But uh, Texans, great hit. Jets, obviously they won the game outright. The Pats blew them out. Uh, the Ravens manhandled New Orleans. I honestly feel like I should have gone five and zero on this list. Uh, you know, and and three and two on the next list. But we'll take what we can get. Uh, our season record not fantastic, but that's what happens when you throw so many bets out there. But here we are moving out to our bets for week 10. These are the lines. My favorite bet uh, is Falcons minus three at Carolina. Atlanta on the road is three and one against the spread, but they're just covering that spread by an average of one. Like it's very, it's very close. Uh, and then Carolina at home, they're two and three against the spread and they're only, and they are plus 2.1. But that, first of all, they, they should be, they should be, uh, one and one and four with a regular minus, but they had that one blowout win against Tampa Bay for some reason, just inexplicably Tampa Bay just decided to suck for a couple weeks. Uh, and so, you know, that 14 point spread ended up going 14 point deficit to like a, like a 10 point victory. So that's, you know, a massive, massive chunk. Uh, you know, that's about 30 points. So, I mean, they, they should really be minus uh, about eight or nine. So I'm not going to pay too much attention to that. The Falcons minus three tonight is the play. Seahawks plus three at Tampa Bay. Get this. Tampa Bay at home is 0-4-1 against the spread with an average of minus 5.2 against the spread per game. Tampa Bay overall on the season, if I'm not mistaken, is like 2-6-1 against the spread. They're they're horrendous. Uh, but Seattle on the road, they're three and two with an average of plus four point eight. That is that's 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 ten points right there. Literally ten point swing of Seattle being good, Tampa Bay being bad. I would bet I would bet the Seahawks outright. You get you get better odds that way, uh, but at least to lose by less than a field goal. Cowboys minus five at Green Bay. This one this one kind of broke my heart. I'm not a real Packer fan, but I just I hate seeing Aaron Rodgers lose football games. But Dallas on the road, they're two and one against the spread with plus seven and a half per game. While Green Bay at home is one and two with a minus eight against the spread. It's just it's it's terrible. This is if you're going by the numbers, this is the lock of the week. Cowboys minus five at Green Bay. Now, if you're going by it, there's no way Aaron Rodgers loses six games in a row. There's no way Aaron Rodgers loses to Detroit. And then doesn't respond. Like if 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 you're going by the mentality, the storylines, I'd be careful by this game. But smart betters, the numbers, all on Dallas. The Giants minus four and a half versus Houston. They're at home. Giants at home are three and one against the spread, covering by two point six. While Houston on the road, they're okay. They're two one and one about average, and they're covering by one point six. I like the Giants here because they're coming off of a buy. Uh, now, Houston, you know, you, they kind of mitigate that by coming off of that Thursday night football game against the Eagles. So they have a little bit extra rest, but not like the Giants do. And good football coaches with a bye end up coaching very good games. So I'm taking Brian Dable and the Giants minus four and a half. And then I like the Eagles 
minus 10 and a half versus Washington. Now, so far this year, large spreads have not been great, but here, here's what we have. Philadelphia at home is 4-0 and against the spread, covering by minus 7.1. Washington on the road is 2-2 two and two against the spread with a minus of 3.3. Both of their last two games against Taylor Heineke, they're undefeated. I think they're going to come down to earth. Plus, the Eagles have a long rest coming off of that that Texans victory, that that Texans trip out to Houston. Uh, and so, you know, plus this one follows a zigzag method. You take a team that didn't cover the Eagles last week versus a team that did cover the Commanders. By all accounts, these are some great bets. Uh, only, only one underdog and only one large spread, only one touchdown plus spread. Uh, I still like the Eagles there. Um, pretty soon, I think the wheels are going to come off for Philadelphia, but not yet. Now we're going to move to the over-unders. I like Arizona at the Rams under 43 and a half. The Rams at home are three and two on the under, but they're minus 2.5. While Arizona on the road is two, one and one. So they both have winning records hitting the under, but they really have only had, uh, you know, like, you know, like close, close overs. And then they've had, you know, a bunch of massive unders. So I like the under here. Plus, they hit the under the last time they played. Uh, the Chargers at the 49ers, over 45 and a half. This one, I kind of kind of flopped back and forth on whether or not I wanted to include it. But the Chargers on the road are 2-2 two and two on the over, plus 2.4. While San Francisco at home is 1-2 and two on the over with a positive 1.3. But what I like about this is that so far this season, after a bye, the over hits more often than the under does. So after a bye, when teams are getting healthy, and teams are implementing game plans. It seems to have benefited the offense more so far than it has the defense. The Chargers have a porous defense, but a powerful offense that can really get hit everywhere. Uh, Keenan Allen might play. I, I would like to see him play. I like him as a receiver, but uh, the over on this one, it's a very close one. But I think, I mean, it really just feels like, you know, this this is coming for, a, you know, like a 27-25 type of victory. Now, Dallas at Green Bay, the under. This one was really difficult, but Dallas on the road, they're one and two with a with a hard under, uh, minus 2.8. And Green Bay at home, they're two and one on the under, but they're still minus 1.7. So both are in the negatives, uh, you know, at, at their respective positions right here. 42 and a half doesn't seem incredibly high, but remember Detroit, the worst defense up to this point in NFL history, just held Green Bay to nine points. We'll see what Dallas can do. Now, Houston at the Giants under 40 and a half. I, I'm nervous about I'm nervous about spreads or not spreads, but over unders that are below 42. But 40 and a half points. Houston on the road is two and two hitting the under with a minus of 7.4. Now, and the real reason for this is defense travels, right? So if you have a if you have a team with a defensive identity like Dallas, like Houston, defense is going to travel better. So the under on that. Two and two uh, with the under record, and then seven point four average below. That's great. And then the Giants at home, they're three and one hitting the under with a with an average of minus four point one. The, the Giants, whether we realize it or not, are a defensive team. Like I know that like Saquon and Brian Dable and Daniel Jones, like like they're a nice story. The Giants are a defensive team. Uh, so this forty and a half, it feels low, but I think I think we can hit under it. And then Cleveland at Miami. This was the biggest shock to me, maybe of my of, of my uh, entire season this year gambling, is that I actually convinced myself to bet the under on a Cleveland versus Miami. Uh, you know, two teams that are just incredible on the overs. But what we don't realize is that Cleveland on the road is pretty bad on hitting the overs. They're 2-1 and one hitting the under with a minus 0.3. While Miami at home, their defense – is incredible at home. That home that home field advantage is killing for them. They are 4-0 betting the under at home with an average of minus 14.4 points per game. 14.4 points per game below the over-under. I don't think this game is going to be a 34-point game, basically. I don't think it's going to be a 34-point total. But all the math points to the under on this 48-and-a-half line. And it, it is the highest over-under of all the games that I'm going to bet. So that's what we've got right there. 
Thanks for watching that video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and stay up to date on all of our future content.